We seem to be entering something of a conservative moment in Canadian politics right now, where a number of provinces have gone from having centrist or left-wing parties governing them to being governed now by conservative premiers. And the polls show that there's a pretty decent chance that Andrew Scheer could unseat Justin Trudeau and he becomes the next conservative prime minister of Canada. A great moment, a great opportunity for people who want a number of conservative policies, including fiscal conservatism, right? Well, sure, but you have to get it right and you have to make good use of the opportunity. And I'm seeing a number of signals and signs recently that perhaps that's not necessarily going to happen. I was having a conversation with a former Mike Harris cabinet minister uh, not too long ago, talking about this very phenomenon, Doug Ford being in power in Ontario and so forth, and asking how he looked back on, on the phenomenon that, uh, that they underwent in Ontario with the Mike Harris common sense revolution. And what he said, and apparently what a number of other former Harris ministers are saying, is their one big regret is that they had done more and that they had done it sooner and that a lot of people, conservative politicians, who wanted to bring about fiscally conservative change always look back and go, I should have done it this way, that way I should have been more aggressive. We all know that there are leftists who are very good at spending other people's money and they can pull a random deficit number out of the hat and bam, sit the people with it and put it on the books and then we're left grappling with it. Well, we've seen some pledges recently from conservative politicians that sound like they're darn right liberal. And you want to ask, are they aggressive enough? Andrew Scheer just the other week announced when he would balance the books, and he said that the conservatives would do it in five years. He says that's the magnitude of the problem that Justin Trudeau has presented them with, that he's left the government with, with his massive deficits. Of course, he promised only 10 billion, and then in the first year, it was almost 30 billion. He's really racking it all up. But what does it tell us that in four years, you can run four years of deficits and it's so problematic that a conservative government comes in and says they can do it in five years? That five years is the time it takes to turn all of this around? Well, of course, there's no such thing as a five-year term. The best Andrew Scheer would get is a four-year majority, maybe be re-elected and then go on to that fifth year. But basically what Andrew Scheer was saying was even if he gets a majority, he won't balance the budget. That's a problem. And we've got similar things happening in Alberta and in Ontario. Doug Ford announcing recently in his actual budget that they will not balance the books left over from Kathleen Wynne until year five. There is no year five. Doug Ford has a four-year majority term. So he's saying only if he gets re-elected will he balance the books. Now, you can say that Kathleen Wynne left the government in a bad situation, the Ontario coffers, and she absolutely did. But... Are they doing enough? Are they focused enough? Are they being aggressive enough such that you can have four years of Doug Ford, a politician who, if you read all the headlines, they say he's making cuts left, right, and center. Well, the truth is Doug Ford actually is not making any cuts. They're shuffling the money around to different departments and different priorities, but government is growing in Ontario. He has increased the size of the budget, the debt is going up, and he has decreased the deficit so he's not doing it uh, as, as poorly as Kathleen Wynne was doing it, but he is still racking up a lot of debt. Jason Kenney, he's saying that they're going to balance the books in year four. And credit to him, he has a majority and is a four-year term. So he's saying his last budget, he will balance the books. This all coming after just four years of Rachel Notley running deficits. It, it, it's very dismaying. And we need to have a conversation about fiscal conservatism in Canada are we getting what we asked for? And if not, why not? Is it just that, oh, cuts are hard and you know it's harder than we first thought? Well, okay, that may be the case, but why is it then in just a few years, someone like Trudeau can bring in all these deficits and you suddenly say, we don't know how to deal with this. We don't know how to grapple with it. Are you conceding that Justin Trudeau was right throwing all that money into the system? Or are you saying you don't wanna make the tough decisions and deal with the blowback from rolling all of that out? And what about a lot of big ticket issues that a lot of fiscal conservatives have been advocating for for years now? Changing the pension system that public servants receive. Private sector people generally don't receive defined benefit uh, pensions anymore where you get a, a massive lump sum, basically a mini salary from retirement until your death. The private sector is reforming that. The public sector should reform that. 
Also, back in the day, it used to be that public sector employees made a little bit less than their private sector counterparts, but the deal was that they knew they had job security, so they took less. Now reports say that public sector workers are making about 11-12% more than private sector workers. Well, there's your premium. New hires should be brought in at about 10% less than the people previously in that position. So we can equalize all of that for fairness. These are the big ticket conversations we have to have right now because we are in a conservative moment in Canada where conservatives are on the upswing. But if they all get into office, you wanna make sure they make good use of their time.